What does your baseball team go through in the off season? Well, it really starts the first day of school. Um, we're going to have oh a team meeting and uh, you know talk about academics and just our schedule of events coming up for the fall. And then after that, we're going to go through you know a couple of different phases in our strength and conditioning. Phase number one is what we call technique phase. I mean, we'll have guys that have never lifted a weight in their life. And so we're going to bring them in and really show them the techniques of the different lifts that we're going to do for about six weeks. Um, and then after that six-week period, or excuse me, during that six-week period, we're practicing. We're having team practices and individual practices. At the, uh, the final week of the six-week time period, we're going to play what we call the Dirty Bird World Series, which we basically split up into uh, two different teams, and then my assistant coaches coaches uh, coach those, and then we play best three out of five, and uh, we crown a champion. And then I really just do a lot of evaluating at that time. I sit back and take notes and try to put a depth chart together and you know see who's performing well and who's not performing so well, those kinds of things. And at the end of this little World Series that we have, um, I crown an MVP, and I call him Mr. October. Okay. And we get a T-shirt for them that says Mr. October on it, so it's a pretty fun deal for the kids. Who was your guy this year? Uh, who was David Collins? David Collins threw two complete games shutouts in the World Series. So he's going to be a Mr. October this year. How about after the World Series? What do you do then uh, for until your first games? So then we transition into what we call phase two of our strength and conditioning, which is just a more beefed up um, part of, of lifting. We're going to add some more lifts to it. The intensity is going to increase. The number of days that we lift is going to increase. The number of sets and reps. So everything is is geared more towards you know getting bigger, bulkier, not not necessarily bulkier, but okay. bigger and stronger. And uh, then we're going to add some conditioning things to that, some speed, plyometric, agility drills, to uh, you know go with uh, enhance the three day a week lifting. And then the the final thing that we do is we have what's called individual groups where we'll bring in two to three hitters at a time and work with them four days a week for about 30 minutes at a time. Really breaking down their swing, helping them learn you know, the different things, that maybe what their weaknesses are, talk about their strengths, why they're their strengths. But it's a really one-on-one -on -one individual time to work with the kid in his swing. And then we'll uh, do the same thing with our pitching staff. Tell us about your new assistant coach because I know he spends an awful lot of time with those those hitters individually. Yeah, we have a new assistant this year. His name's Jason Middleton, and he came from James Madison University, where he was really instrumental, playing a big role in a lot of their uh, you know things that they did in their program, on campus recruiting and uh, you know camps, work with the hitters, the outfielders, so he's been just a blessing to have and he is really taking our hitters, you know, I, I've given him a lot of freedom to take our hitters and just get comfortable with them because obviously he's new and he needs to learn who these guys are, but he's just done a great job. You're talking about the weights and uh, has that always been a, a part of what you have done or have you changed your philosophy on that over the years? No, weight training is, is really a foundational core of who we are as a program. You know, when I took over our baseball program 10 years ago now, uh, we really put a, a big emphasis on strength and conditioning. And I think baseball at that time was just kind of coming out of its denial mm -hmm. of how important lifting weights was to the sport. You know, there for so many years, coaches said, don't lift weights, don't lift weights. And I was fortunate enough that you know, I really was never influenced by that. My football coach in high school was a huge baseball guy too. And I really, you know, he, he had a big influence on me in lifting weights. And I've had a lot of friends in high school that were big into weightlifting. And so it's really carried over for me. And 
I personally saw the benefits of what it could do for me as a player when I felt bigger, faster, and stronger. And so I've always taken that mentality with me everywhere I've been, and it's been a huge part of who we are at William Jewell. And needless to say, when I first got here, you know, we, we weren't the most talented team. And, uh, you know, I said to myself, what can we do? What can we be good at? We might not be good right now at fielding and throwing or, or have the best players, but we can still be good at something. What can we be the best at right now? And it was going to be our strength and conditioning, you know, our work ethic. And that has really transformed, I think, our program into where it is right now. I know at the college level, you've got to be aware of how the kids are doing academically throughout the school year. Something we don't talk about a lot during the season because we're interested in how the baseball team is doing. But can you talk a little bit about your philosophy and, and what you do with the kids academically? Sure. Uh, well, we have the Academic Achievement Center on campus, and we have a lot of different tutoring opportunities you know, where the kids can go into the Achievement Center, talk with Janelle Dozar, who is the coordinator of all tutoring services, and you know, she can get kids help that way whenever they need them. We also have um, our, our provost of the college does a five-week um, mandatory grade check on all student athletes and so I get those results on the grades of all the student athletes on my particular team and then I can I can target those kids that might be on a list of you know maybe not doing that well or needing help and then I can go to each one of them individually and then we can make a game plan of you know how are we going to correct this what do we need to do what tutoring services do we need to to go see about and you know that's kind of how we approach that. Let's say let's talk recruiting a little bit. Let's say that you have a piece of clay and you can make the the Mike Stockton baseball player you want here in Jewel. Tell me about what that player is. In other words, what are you looking for in a player? Sure. Well, we're primarily looking for three things, and we call when you get all three of those things, we call that person the package. And the package to us is a good student, a good player, and a great person. Those are, the, those are the three characteristics that we're looking at. I mean, for example, I've had plenty of kids that were great players, maybe a pitcher that could throw upper 80s or 90 miles an hour, but academically, if he's not where he needs to be, then we're not going to recruit him. Uh, you know, another one is the character. The character is probably the biggest thing for me. I can't tell you how many times we've done, you know, some background research before bringing a kid in. Okay, he's a good student, and we know he's a good baseball player, but when he comes in for his visit, and the way he interacts with his parents is just, you know, negatively or back-talking right. because they feel like mom and dad are asking stupid questions, so the recruit will turn around and tell them, you know, <laughs> hey, you're asking a stupid question, or just the interaction, sure. you know, that's a real red flag for me. Uh, so you might be a great student, you might be a great player, but, you know, that character piece is probably the biggest component that we're after. So those are the three main things that we're looking at when we're recruiting someone. Look back on your years here, and uh, can you pick out one or two highlights, uh, one or two things you're, you're very proud of in your years here, Joe? Well, there's definitely more than one or two. I can tell you for sure, but um, the very first team that I ever coached, those kids really built a foundation that at the time they probably didn't realize how important their legacy they, they were leaving behind was going to be. And it really wasn't about winning games. I mean, we were 21 and 17 my first year, and that was an improvement from five wins the year before. So that legacy that those kids started to create my very first year here, I'm proud of the way that they bought in and became committed and dedicated to our program. Obviously other highlights was our first conference championship when I was here and that was two years later and we set the school record for wins that season. I had a couple of All-Americans on the team uh, we also won the regional 
that year. So we played in the Super Regional to go to the World Series. So that was a big highlight. I'll never forget that. You know, the conference championships are big. Uh, I remember turning a triple play in a regional against Avila University. You know, and Avila was a big rival for us for so long, and I'll never forget that. And then, you know, some few highlighted uh, individual performances. I mean, we've had kids that have hit game-winning home run, you know, walk-off mm -hmm. home runs. I remember Noah Peary hitting a walk-off grand slam. Um, and probably the last one, I mean, there are many more I could go on, but the last one is just last season. You know, to put some closure on our long stint in the NAIA and especially our membership with the Hack. You know, you build a lot of relationships and you have a lot of rivals at that time. But you know, to be to to record the final out in our last game ever in the in the heart of America. To, to record that final out and to see our kids dogpiling on the field and then to get the water cooler of Gatorade dumped on you, I mean, that's pretty special. Yeah. Pretty special moment knowing that William Jewell was the last team standing our final season in the NAI.